Welcome back to the Zero to Six Figure series. This is a series where I showcase you my portfolio, what I'm doing in crypto and how I'm allocating. So this is episode 11. Without further ado, let's just jump straight into it. Um, so this is the portfolio. Over the last one month, we are down a fair amount and that's because the market has kind of downtrended a little. Um, whilst the big um, coins like Bitcoin and Ethereum have been holding up relatively well, alts have been bleeding um, and that's just uh, how it is. Uh, and unfortunately, that does mean that we do have a bit of red, especially with some of the more higher risk uh, alts um, and even some of the alts that I just bought literally a couple of weeks ago, YTK, the, one of the latest uh, um, assets in the portfolio, we're already down minus 50%. Uh, but, you know, this is a thing that does happen uh, when you buy uh, low market cap altcoins. And, you know, YTK has a sub 50 million fully diluted and I think it has a circulating of less than 10 mil. So expect volatility like this. You can see it's 6% up today, but, you know, any any minute it could go down 20% and up 50%, you know, that's just the nature of uh, the liquidity and kind of um, low, low market altcoins. Um, today, what I wanted to talk about is kind of just the overall portfolio, how things are going. Uh, secondly, showcase some of the DeFi uh, positions that I'm in. Uh, and thirdly, uh, three altcoins that I'm personally uh, looking at to do some more research on, but also considering to allocate into the portfolio as well. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's just quickly go through all of the assets and kind of just talk about them. Uh, USDC, uh, stablecoin still the majority or holding in the, or the biggest holding in the portfolio. Uh, my plan is to accumulate some more USDC into the portfolio. So perhaps in the next couple of episodes, we'll see See this grow uh, a fair amount um, and what I am planning to do is kind of continue to dollar cost average into various different altcoins uh, when I find the time to be right. Uh, the ARB that I hold uh, is from the airdrop and I still have half of it uh, of course half I did sell uh, which is where the USDC it came from uh, and with this ARB I'm going to hold it for the long run. I'm not doing anything with it I'm not farming with it or anything just yet I mean if I do find the right uh, farming opportunities uh, I probably will just kind of set and forget at the moment I haven't found anything too good just yet so perhaps that's something that I need to look into uh, but I'm just kind of holding on to this I think uh, Arbitrum is a growing layer 2 it's got all the activity at the moment and I think um, people will speculate via its governance token so that's the reason why I have it uh, FXS has had a quite a fair pullback actually I mean this was at 13 14 dollars almost at one point um, and I think whilst it has come down I think it's coming back to the, those levels where I'm looking to accumulate further so uh, expect this again to also increase over time um, ETH we've been farming with our ETH uh, and we've been doing actually really well with it which is why you can see the all-time PL uh, at 200 percent uh, we've been farming the hell out of it and we've been making some really good progress there. So uh, really good stuff and uh, Ethereum, I want to bump it up <laughs> as much as possible. So we're going to continue to grow that stack over time. Uh, Butterfly, again, one of my favorite altcoins has been bleeding uh, and we're in the red by 27% almost, but not, not to worry. I think uh, the lower we go down, the more attractive prices are getting and the more I will try and accumulate. Um, Lyra uh, has been something that has performed fairly poorly over the last three months. Um, perhaps part of the reason comes from the huge incentives that they're giving out at the moment, but I mean, the platform is working well and, and working pretty well. So, uh, and of course, driving a lot of volume too. Um, and so uh, ultimately one of the bets I'm having is there will be some sort of sort of token gener revenue generation in future, but time will tell. Uh, Chainlink is Chainlink as, as always, and Y2K is uh, down pretty bad. Um, again, as I mentioned at the start of the video, that's the nature of low market cap altcoins. Um, but I think Y2K will have its time again, um, especially with its recent uh, updates with uh, Earthquake version 2. Um, so that's where we are at the moment. Um, nothing really too crazy from last episode. I think just uh, a little bit more accumulation in Ethereum. So uh, let's have a look at the last transactions. Um, let's look at all of these. Um, so yeah, I mean, we've had uh, in May, the only things that we've done is we've been farming with our Lyra and Velodrome, so we've been able to accumulate some more, and I've been farming the ETH on Y2K, so I've just added that into the portfolio now, but otherwise, I mean, since April, we haven't really added, had too much activity going on, um, but I think soon we probably will, as prices have become more attractive, uh, for sure. I think uh, if we go to charts, perhaps we can see this better, but yeah, we can see kind of how, after the Arbitrum airdrop in March, uh, things have 
have kind of stagnated. We haven't really made much progress uh, over the last kind of three months. It's kind of been sideways, but this is a farmer's dream, a sideways market, because all we can do is just keep accumulating and accumulating and accumulating. And that's the plan, for hopefully, for the for the foreseeable future, as the market is going to likely be sideways somewhat anyway. So uh, that's good to see. I think if we look at this in terms of ETH as well, I mean, we're pretty much stable as well. Uh, I think only in BTC we might be a little bit down, but actually, in fact, uh, I mean, really, from from April, things have kind of gone down a little bit, but not really substantial and uh, nothing to be too, too concerned about as well. Uh, pie chart probably looks a little similar to before. I mean, ETH has probably grown a little bit and the plan is to grow this to perhaps maybe around 15 percent, I think, uh, in the foreseeable future. But we'll have to wait and see. Uh, it kind of depends how things are going. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I thought uh, next thing that I'll showcase to you is kind of what I'm farming at the moment. So I've made this quick spreadsheet. Um, I usually just kind of track these positions uh, on paper or on via my wallets. Um, so uh, I don't really use this spreadsheet too often. I've kind of got things written down already, uh, but I thought this is the, probably the best way to showcase to you kind of what I'm doing and where I'm doing it. Um, so the stables uh, are actually distributed uh, across Uniswap and Convex. Um, yes, uh, the Uniswap position is on, on Arbitrum, so perhaps I should add another column kind of commenting on the blockchain as well. Uh, and the Convex position is on Ethereum. Um, you you might think, well, why would you do that? The gas fees are so high. They probably are, but I just kind of kept it as a long, long-term position. So um, I did it when gas fees were pretty cheap, so it didn't really cost me too much. Um, the, fee, the the yields are pretty good uh, on both um, the Uniswap and the Convex position. I think they're essentially the same pools, really. Um, OM USDC and Frax base pool are almost identical. Uh, but the Uniswap position is printing pretty nicely at the moment. Uh, and uh, so a plan is to continue accumulating uh, with both of them. Uh, on Convex, obviously, I'm getting paid in Curve, Convex, and FXS. And so the plan is to perhaps accumulate the FXS there. Uh, but the Curve and Convex I might sell. And we'll talk about what I might sell that in to uh, shortly. Uh, Y2K, they have the uh, weekly vaults for the various different assets and I'm basically depositing my ETH in them every single week. The yields are ridiculous, so I'm just going to continue to just maximize that as much as possible. Um, there's been some weeks where I've made like 7 or 8% in the week. Um, so you know, if you do that for the whole year, it becomes an incredible APY. Uh, and so yeah, we're just going to continue with that. Um, our butterfly is locked on Redacted Cartel's uh, staking page, earning around 40%. Uh, and on Velodrome, we've got the Lara USDC farm. So yeah, uh, putting some putting the Lyra to use uh, there. Um, I was very briefly on Pendle Finance's uh, USDT pool. Um, they had some nice incentives there, but I've kind of removed that position now um, just because it, the, the yield just wasn't as good anymore. Uh, and at the moment, I'm happy with the OM USDC, GOM USDC pool. Uh, probably will continue to add uh, when possible as well. Um, let me know in the comment section below if there's any particular pool or farm that you're in. Uh, I will make a Farms of the Month video fairly soon, which will probably uh, talk about some of these, as well as some others, which I do have my eye on as well. So um, take take a look at that when that does come out. Uh, and then I thought for the last part of this video, uh, let's talk about three assets that I'm looking at accumulating. Uh, so the first one is Matic. Um, you might be asking, you know, why would you want to accumulate Matic? It's a bit of a weird one. But uh, I think uh, for me, uh, Matic is probably going to be uh, the normie chain for the next cycle. Uh, well, I'd like to think so anyway. Um, I think uh, there's some fairly interesting stuff being built there. Yes, I think the blockchain isn't probably the best to use. I think DeFi-wise, Arbitrum and Ethereum are so much better. Uh, but I think if you kind of look at some of the other stuff being built on there, whether that's Lens Protocol or, or various other kind of DeFi apps, there is stuff on Polygon and I think there is some value there. And I think because of its uh, amazing BD team. Uh, I think that this is probably one of the layer one side chains, what layer twos, whatever you want to call it, that I would perhaps be a little bit more inclined to accumulate. Now, I haven't done so just yet, and part of the reason is because just a year ago, this was in the 30 cents, you know, 30 to 50, 60 cents region, uh, and even for some time was uh, as low as like the 70s. Currently, we're in the mid to high 80s. Um, and so ideally, I am looking to accumulate back, uh, you know, towards this range again. 
but I think over the next month, if kind of things aren't really changing too much, I shouldn't really be caring too much about a 5% here or 5% there, especially if I'm trying to accumulate assets, which I'm looking at multiple X's in future. So uh, this is something that's really on my, on, uh, you know, on my time frame right now, especially with ZK EVM now as well. No, no, ZK EVM, uh, for those of you who don't know, that's Polygon's new layer two blockchain um, has come out. I know that the traction on there hasn't been so good just yet, but I'm pretty sure there will be some incentives there in future. So uh, I think there will be a time for Matic to have a run up again. Um, and I think at a $8 billion or $9 billion FTV, I think it's fairly cheap actually, especially when you compare that to some of the other layer ones that have much, much higher FTVs as well. So one to keep an eye on. Uh, API 3 is an interesting one. It's uh, basically another Oracle provider, and this is a competitor to Chainlink. Now, if I'm being honest, I haven't done my deep dive on API 3 just yet, but it's something that I am looking at. Now, I did have a chat with the team recently, and uh, I am pretty interested to see kind of what they're building and kind of why they're building it. But uh, I thought I'd just showcase this to you as something that I've got my eye on at the moment. Not that I'm going to buy it, not that I'm uh, not that I'm sold on it at all, but just something that I've got my eye on and something that I'm hopefully going to research in the near future. Uh, and then lastly, Conic. Conic is a, a great little one. Now, this is a low market cap altcoin, $23 million market cap, 54 million FDV. And you might be asking, what the hell is Conic? Well, Conic um, is essentially, in my opinion, a leverage bet on Curve. Now, Curve um, have recently released Curve USD and I've made some videos about uh, CRV USD. Uh, and Conic is likely going to anticipate kind of capturing some of that value here and you can probably see that from today's 15% uh, rise with CRV USD's uh, front end coming out today as well. Um, and so because of that, what I am actually thinking is that I will perhaps take some of this curve and convex rewards that I am getting and just swap them out for Conic um, because it's essentially my leverage bet on the growth of curve. Um, and I think with the Omnipools, especially with the curve USD uh, Omnipool coming up fairly soon, um, I think that is going to create uh, some new wars, the Conic Finance Wars, perhaps, who knows. Um, but I think the governance token here will have some value. And so it's something that I'm considering to accumulate. Uh, so if we head back into the into the $4 range again, which we probably were for some time, actually, I mean, from uh, the last week only, uh, if we head back into this range, um, probably will accumulate some. So uh, we'll have to just wait and see. But I mean, it is still fairly extended from... It's still quite a fair off, fair amount off its all-time high, but yeah, I'm going to just um, uh, see how things go uh, over the next few weeks to months uh, and kind of decide. But the yeah, iconic is one that is on my list. So yeah, overall the portfolio currently at twelve thousand one hundred and nine dollars. Uh, all-time we are up seventy-five percent. Um, total gain is around seven thousand dollars. So we've invested about. $5,100 or something around that mark. Um, so total profit around 7,000 if we were to sell right now. Of course, most of that comes from the Arb airdrop. Um, so yeah, the portfolio is doing okay. I wouldn't say it's doing fantastic. Um, but again, 2023, probably a choppy year. I'm expecting more red. I'm expecting more green, a bit of both. So that's where we are this episode 11. Hope you liked the video. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. And of course, I'll be back with plenty more content in the near future.